So what are next steps now uh, for, for Matt? He, he comes to Boulder. He's working with the accelerator. Now what? Are we, are we going to roll out? We're going to finish FlexBot. We're going we're gonna to roll out new items. Talk to me about the plan. Right. So the, the startup accelerator we got in starts um, at the end of February, and it's a 12-week program sponsored by the telecom industry with the goal of solving their problems with our technology. And our goal going into there and working with them is to really understand the first person who's going to use this and how do you get to that person. And whether it's if we want to do, uh, you know, looking towards doing funded trials with the telecoms, what level do we need to be at technically to begin working with them and doing pilot and field testing and things like that? And then looking to exit the accelerator uh, demo days, middle of May. Okay. Um, and then I'll be back here while we kind of look towards the future. The goal would be after the accelerator close a seed round, okay. that'll take us from a proof of concept prototype that I can drive around and show people what it does to funding the actual go to market, um, making algorithms. I, I, I'd like to describe our user interface. The vision is similar to you look at the new robotic vacuums and you have, it, it, it maps your house out real fast and you can mark like, please don't go on my Persian rug. And you can, so, a user interface that's as intuitive as something like that. So anybody can pick it up. So we have to work on that. And then of course, the hardware to our vision is mass deployment, hundreds of thousands of units out there. Mm -hmm. And so taking what does well when I build one of them and doing the design for manufacture and kind of that supply chain and go to the market. Now, now are you, are you going to focus on FlexBot specifically just that one unit until that really gets rolling before you build something else? Or have you kind of decided what, what does that look like for additional robots? I guess is my question. Right now we're, hyper focused on the flexbot architecture okay um, that's our core ip this ability to extend and rotate um, and that's what uh hopefully in the next six months our patents will be issued around that technology okay. and so our vision with it is right now the telecoms this electricians this notion of worker safety and increasing uptime and decreasing injuries and also bringing robotics to the masses by lowering price is all hyper focused around the flex spot. Our notion is then once we have those initial customers and we start generating revenue in that field, mm -hmm. what's nice with robotics, something like this, and the way we're developing the software is that other applications can be written on top of it. It's almost, there's something called the robot operating system. We have this notion now of you buy a robot and it's the equivalent of buying an AI, like an Android phone, where anybody can write an app on top of it to do whatever they want or you go into a store these days mm -hmm. and rather than you used to see these fancy schmancy little scanners when you would go and buy something now they're all just like using an iphone in a dock so you have the core technology and then you're able to adapt it to additional use cases i see and that's what we'd be looking to do i mean ultimately i think there's other avenues we could pursue going down but that's distracting right now from our core goal of applying the FlexBot technology to these problems that we see in electrical and telecom. Do you see um, every construction site across the country eventually having a FlexBot in the toolbox? That's the vision. And <laughs> I think what, kind of to analogize it, you would see, let's take drones, for instance, okay. where even five or 10 years ago, let's excuse five years ago, if you wanted somebody to do aerial photography for you or to survey your roof, you'd have to go and hire somebody who'd fly this $30,000 drone. And it was never feasible for you to have mm -hmm. a drone yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we're at with the majority of robotics these days. The average service robot is in the 50 grand range, which for many industries is doable, but for mass deployment to there's right. 700,000 electricians in the U S yeah. 230,000 telecom workers, mm -hmm. you know, to make a million $60,000 robots right. is a lot of investment that I don't think you're going to see, but yeah. 
our vision is driving down the cost to where where let's just say a grand. Well, electricians and workers have thousands of dollars worth of tools, a screw gun to 300 bucks. And that notion of at a certain price point, it becomes just another tool. And that's what we're trying to drive. Just how drones these days have gone from that $30,000 to you go into Best Buy and for 800 bucks, you walk away with a drone that you can't crash if you tried to. Right. <laughs> um, and that's where kind of we're looking to bring this technology of my background is I was a licensed contractor. I supported my summers in grad school and started as an undergrad as superintendent of properties for one of the off-campus landlords here in Bethlehem. Uh, going into junior year of college, so moving into my first off-campus house and looking for a summer job and said, hey, do you guys need any help uh, fixing things at the houses? They're like, well, we need help cleaning. Show up to clean the first day, start cleaning. Something was broken. Nobody had the tool. I'm like, I have the tool. Go and grab the tool. Next thing you know, two weeks later, I'm fixing everything that the uh, college kids broke. So started with them with about eight houses, became their first employee, became the superintendent and grew them to about 35 houses, an apartment building over five years. And that's where all these problems came out. These are old Bethlehem steel houses, plaster and lath. And every time we'd finish a renovation, it'd be like, oh, we forgot to run cables. Do you mind pulling it? It's like, I could have done that last week. And so originally FlexBot started out as this robot that would go in through an outlet sized hole, drive through the wall, drill through every stud and joist, pop out the end and pull your wires without a mess. Mm. And was gonna be targeted directly at electricians. And as I mentioned earlier, that transition at the end of 2018 to, well, instead of this $15,000, $20,000 expensive metal heavy duty robot, well, can I make this for a grand? And now figure out what we can do. And so many times in the field, I just have this vision of this time I was at this house and trying to fish a wire from one half of the attic to the other. And the joists were going the right way, just trying to push it. And there's this little knot that you just right. couldn't get over. <laughs> I spent 30 minutes just going. And if I had something like the flex spot, that's just like, hold on. Yeah. It would solve so many of those problems of, oh, I wish I had. Not to mention, we have a problem here where one electrician dies in the U.S. every day. And thousands are injured every year I didn't know from that. high voltage arc flashing. Well, so like you're working okay. in your house, you accidentally touch the outlet. It hurts a little bit in the circuit breaker trips. Well, in these big power systems, we're talking hundreds or thousands of amps and 100,000 volts. So high voltage, high current, and arc flashing just jumps across. And we're seeing that workers are reluctant to wear the special clothing. And even with the special clothing, you have issues with it's uncomfortable, it smells, all this sort of stuff. Mm. And you, you contrast that with industries like the telecom industry, where a single minute of downtime can cost eight grand. So it's not like your internet service providers gung ho on turning off the internet for the day. So you can go and inspect the thing you have to do as a worker. And we really see this opportunity of giving workers the tools to get where they need to go safely and easily. And that's, I think, our big selling point is we're not at all looking to replace workers or take away jobs mm. or automate. We have this whole subset of very skilled workers, telecom workers, electricians, who clearly in their mind know what has to happen. But there's a whole bunch of obstacles between them and the goal, be it safety, or I just can't reach across the floorboard. Mm -hmm. And if we put one more tool in their tool chest that enables their lives to be done better and safer. That's what we're trying to do. You know, everything ties together from your past, right? I, I think that I'm glad you talked about the fact that you were basically a handyman because all the way from when, when you were a kid and you were curious and you're learning how to fix stuff and then your engineering degree, and then you were basically a handyman doing some of that kind of stuff th through college. And then you experienced these problems. And then your mind went right to, I know this can be done better. I bet I can figure something out to make this easier. I mean, it all ties together to bring you right where you're at today. It's not like you just said, oh, I'm gonna start a business and create a, you know, a FlexBot tool. It, you created it from all of your experiences and, and you know, you've experienced what it's like to be that guy that's trying to thread that cable through the wall. <laughs> you've done it. 
Right. Uh, and I love that. I mean, you can speak right to the experience. Uh, but we're, by the way, we're going to have to make sure we figure out how to get this podcast on some kind of, you know, electrician uh, type podcast or something where the guys that are listening to you talk going, Hey man, when, when can I order one of those? I want to order one of those right now. <laughs> the Rider Flex podcast features entrepreneurs, business executives, and the stories behind how they got there, as well as daily tips on career advice and job interviews. Our show can be heard just about anywhere these days, but you can visit riderflex.com and click on the podcast page to hear all the previous episodes and learn more about the recruiting and consulting services we provide. Contact us at the email address info at riderflex.com or 888-964-5876. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoy our show, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes.